situation in India. Here at home, concern though shows no sign of abating. For more, we're joined by Seven Sport reporter Jim Wilson in Melbourne, along with morning. security expert John Bigelow. And in Sydney, morning show medical contributor Dr Ginny Man Mansberg. Hi Jim. all. Uh, Jim, firstly to you, you've made the decision not to go to these Com Games. Why? Well, it was an individual choice, Carly, and I think, you know, I've said my piece in the last 48 hours about why I'm not going on a personal level with my nine-year-old son, Joseph, front of mind after the year that I've had in losing my other son, Sam. So I, I, I left it to the very last minute. I've been to India three or four times with cricket tours. I've been to hot spots around the world in 24 years of covering major sport. I left it to the very last minute to see what security was like, what logistics was like, what infrastructure was like in India. I then made the call after seeking the advice of people on the ground in Delhi and I'm very comfortable with the decision that I've made. Again, it's an individual decision like Danny Samuels and my big thing now is, is the safety and welfare of our athletes. I should make the point here too that the Seven Network and News Limited who I was working for in Delhi, uh, have done everything possible as far as security is concerned and they have been very understanding of my decision. So again, individual choice, every individual's got that right. And I think, as I said, if athletes want to go, terrific. If athletes don't want to go, that's their choice. Jim, do you think we'll see a large boycott the games? And if so, do you think it'll be much of a competition then? Well, no, I don't, Ron, it's a good question and I think a number of countries are having second thoughts and a number of athletes are having second thoughts and I think in the next couple of days you'll find that athletes and even other commentators and journalists will, have, uh, will revise their thought process of going to Delhi. Uh, I think the Commonwealth Games have reached their use-by date. I've said this months ago. I think the World Championships and Olympic Games, even the Junior Olympics, Junior Worlds, they are a stepping stone to the elite level in sport. I think the Commonwealth Games have run their race and I think certainly after Delhi uh, and, and what's happened there so far in the build-up, I think that just reaffirms that. John, we'll bring you in here. Are you satisfied that there is sufficient security in place at these Games? Yeah, look, I am. Uh, you've got to remember that ju even just from a personnel point of view, there are going to be up to or, or even over 100,000 security personnel on the ground over the course of the Games. That includes uh, about 80,000 Delhi police officers, uh, over 17,500 paramilitary personnel, nearly 3,000 commandos, 100 anti-sabotage teams. Then on top of that, there's airborne snipers, there's CCTV, there's metal detectors, there's a four-layer security cordon. The security overlay in and around the Games area and villages is pretty extensive. John, according to Smart Traveller, there's a high risk of terrorist attack in Delhi. What does that really mean as far as, you know, safety goes for the Australian contingent? I think, again, uh, the Australian Commonwealth Games Federation have sort of said to the athletes it's, they don't want them travelling outside of the Games area during the Games. They want them to stay in the Games venues and the Games areas. And as long as they do that, they're going to be pretty safe. OK, Jenny, from a, we'll bring you in here from a health aspect. Uh, dengue fever, yeah. a big concern. It is really a big concern because if we've sort of ticked off the state of the village and we've ticked off the state of security, we still don't have the dengue covered off. So it's a, a nasty virus that sort of spread through mosquitoes, very similar to malaria. It actually has a similar picture. You have a really high fever, a blinding headache, joint pains, that sort of thing. Horrible part lasts about a week, but it can give you with this sort of glandular fever type illness for up to a year afterwards, which for these elite athletes will pretty much take out their career, you'd have to think. Mm. It's a really big decision because we don't have a vaccine and we don't have a cure. And there's been much made of the uninhabitable, you know, athletes' village. You yeah. know, could the conditions there spoil our athletes' preparation or jeopardise a, a gold medal opportunity? Look, obviously, if it's unhygienic and they get some sort of gastrovirus, it's going to affect their performance at the Games. But they'd sort of recover from that and that wouldn't have any long-term consequences. Mm. I think the big one's the dengue because they're, you know, we've just had a very recent monsoon season, yes. really a nasty one in India. That's why there are so many mosquitoes. There are just a lot of puddles around, basically. And they haven't been able to get on top of this mosquito plague. All right, we'll see what, how it plays out in the next couple of days. Yeah. Of course, the Games are only about 10 or so days away. Thank you, Ginny. Thank you. And also to you, Jim, as well. Thank actually. you. In India and back home, concerns show no sign of abating, despite some more upbeat comments from Games bosses, as you may expect. John Bigelow is a security expert from Security Solutions magazine. Good morning to you, John. Now, John, what are you being told about the likelihood of a terrorist attack? Uh, I think as long as athletes and officials do what they've been asked to do by the Commonwealth Games Association and stay in and around the Games venue and the village area, then it's going to be pretty safe for those people travelling to the Games. 
With regard to Delhi and the area outside the Games Village, well, I mean, there's no guarantees with anything, but I think the area in and around the Games is going to be pretty safe. Because we always hear about terrorist threats, don't we, leading up to Commonwealth Games, Olympic Games. Are there special security measures that are in, in place for Delhi? Absolutely. I mean, this is one of the biggest security overlays that we've seen for a major international event ever, and certainly the biggest the Commonwealth Games has ever seen. Uh, to give you a few basic facts and figures, you're looking at about 100,000 security personnel on the ground, and that includes about 80,000 New Delhi police, over 17,500 paramilitary personnel. You've got 3,000 commandos on, uh, on the team, another 100 sabotage anti-sabotage check teams, You've got uh, Halliborn snipers, you've got snipers on the roofs of buildings all around the game's precinct. Everything right through to all the security measures you would expect, like CCTV, walk-through metal detectors, checking of vehicles, even photographing of spectators and checking their faces against databases. They're even checking the food that's being served to athletes and officials before they get the food. Oh, so official taste testers. All right, thanks yeah. so much, John. No worries. If only we had them at the Channel 7 canteen. Well, troubled Hollywood.